myself. Mm -hmm. Which is very good. Very good for you to self-care. Well, I did. I took sometimes a couple of months off and did just had a quiet time. Then, of course, my career trajectory was somewhat, you know, stunted. And they said, you'll never be a star this way. Well, to be a star was never my aim. I wanted to have a job that I loved, and I did, and I gave it 100% when I was working, but I also felt that I had to have time just to be me, and it was fortunate it was before social media, so it was easy to get off. Yeah. Now, I know from my own experience, when you're a model, you think creatively because you're around creative people all the time hairstylists, fashion designers, creative directors, makeup artists, true makeup artists, um, which really sets the stage for a life Mm -hmm. of creative adventures. When you were modeling, did you ever think of becoming an artist? Well, as you just said, surrounded by creativity all the time, Mm -hmm. you couldn't help but kind of think in that direction. I hadn't actually planned on becoming an artist, but I remember once I was approached by someone who said to me, but artista, you must be an artist. Oh. And I thought, well, uh, huh. <laughs> sure, <laughs> why not? Good. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 so one day that did come true. But as you mentioned about makeup artists, for example, a couple come to mind that were just amazing people. And I had a one particular adventure, but that's a long story to get into <laughs> in Madrid, in Spain, uh, mm-hmm. Vogue magazine, wonderful. He ended up working, it's Anthony Clavette. He ended up doing work with Sophia Loren and many oh, different yeah. actresses. Yeah. yeah. I almost thought he you were going to mention Way Bandy or something. I was going like to say, I, you know, uh, love well, Way Bandy. Yes. Right. You know, many of those makeup artists became, well, some of them are still are today superstars. Yeah. They've written books. They're very creative people and well known in their own right. Yes. So, yes. You know, that kind of leads me to this thought or question. As a model, you had the opportunity to meet many interesting people. Is there any one person that stands out to you and that you felt was a true mentor? You're yeah. around a lot of creative people. Well, hmm, that's quite a, a question. Who was a mentor to you, do you think? Hmm. It's really hard to be honest to pinpoint, you know, one person. One period of time, I think it was a succession of people that I met, a succession of individuals who I spent perhaps a lot of time with working on assignments, getting to know them more closely. And that's how I would answer it. I cannot say there was really one particular person that I thought, oh, this is, you know, my guide. Mm hmm. So it's just a, a so lot sorry of if I different can't people. give you one one name. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. I mean, well, I think were. we learn from almost everybody we meet. Hopefully, we learn one yeah. thing from them, yeah. and that sticks. For some things that people say just very casually can stick with us for a lifetime. And, and sometimes sure. you don't even remember who the person was that was the catalyst to that original thought. True. Sometimes it can mm-hmm. be a stranger on a train. I mean, it can be anyone really yeah. that guides you through life. Yeah, just a, a mm-hmm. or maybe even a quote that you read. Right, right. Precisely. Precisely. Right. Yeah. So, Jennifer, when did you decide you no longer wanted to be in modeling? <laughs> well, maybe it wasn't me deciding. Maybe it was the <laughs> world deciding. <laughs> Enough of her. It all came about probably, you know, I think... It's also to do with, as life goes by, you have different goals and focuses, right? Right, right. And I probably, close to about the time when I got married, I would say, it just kind of happened all in one together. In fact, there I was crossing the street in New York City and had a vision of green. And that green happened to be my first time that I came to Switzerland. And it was in Switzerland that I actually did meet my husband. So there was a flash I came here, and as they say, the rest was history. Yeah, that's but a you big, know, big change from the streets of, of uh, New York. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't stay in Switzerland. Then we met, but then I was going on my journey to visit Australia again, with place where I had been born. And on the way back, we met a second time, and that's what kind of clinched the deal. Well, considering the fact that you were a model for so many years, which is extremely rare, I mean, our listeners need to know that that, especially nowadays, that just doesn't happen. So yeah, for that you were, length of you were, time. Yeah, yeah, you were very fortunate in that respect. But, you know, you've lived in several different countries from around the world. 
I know I want to know. I think Angie wants to know where are you originally from? And as a follow up to that, what is your, what is your favorite place to be? Ah, <laughs> well, I was born on the sea coast in Western Australia. My oh. goodness. So- yeah. South of Perth in a small town called Bunbury, which few people have probably heard of outside of Bunbury, mm-hmm. but it was very beautiful and I loved the sea. And it was a great place to start life. But from there, well, what was your other part of your question? Now my mind kind of went back well, to Australia. No, 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 that, that's track. fine. I, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna add one simple note here. We've had a lot of, we've, we've had a lot of people, a lot of guests from actually Australia. They've all been oh. very interesting and very fun to chat with. But my final part of that question is, what was your fate? What's your favorite place? Uh, to me. That's why I, that's why my attention wandered because again, I was trying to think about favorite place. You know, again, to be honest, like you asked me earlier about mentors, the same thing with countries and places. I don't have one favorite place. There are too many amazing places in the world where I've been, you know, had spent time that I loved. Mm -hmm. And I think that everywhere you go, you're going to find something special. I mean, what about you two? Where would you say is your favorite place? Uh, Right now where we live, I suppose. Uh, (laughs) You see, that that's how I would answer it, too. Right where I live now, I would say the same. Right. Well, I know when you spend time in different countries, 